That's right. In that case, we're, I think we're ready to start the uh, public hearing for two North Avenue. And, um, is this, a, this is a continuation? This is a continuation. Um, yeah, I don't know if we actually open the hearing, the special permit hearing for removal. It's not removal, it's a removal. Um, so I think we've got these lumped together, but, but I think what we should do is have the um, have the earth removal, have the earth movement um, hearing first. And then we'll, we'll then have a separate hearing for limited site plan review on, on, uh, on the issue, other issues. So um, close the door or tell them to head down the hallway. Um, so we'll, we'll open the, the, the... Did you open the earth? No, I don't think we actually opened it. That's what I just said. I th what we should do is actually open that hearing. You see, it's somehow got lumped, the two have gotten lumped together. They should be actually separate here. I remember reading something about the board. Well, we didn't actually open the hearing because we weren't able to do so because we didn't have the plan. Did you have the plan? But we didn't open the hearing because there was, no, there was no way to document what we were doing. So, okay. so we're, we're, I'm, I'm going to start by opening the, the earth movement. It's not removal, it's movement. Okay. Uh, hearing. And then we'll wrap that up and then open this, the, this, the other hearing for the rest of the cycle and review issues. So we will do that. Um, the issue with earth movement is whether you are proposed to move more than a thousand cubic yards of material. Um, and have you calculated the amount of material that you're planning to move? Have you had those calculations? Have you submitted them to anyone? First off, Mr. Hello, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm Robert Dionisi. I represent the applicants. They're here this evening, Sally Andrea, Paras Andrea. Uh, Mike Meyer has been the quarterback of this uh, application since September when it was filed with this board. Rod Woodland from Woodland Design, traffic study. And no Ramadi, who's come all the way from King of Prussia, Pennsylvania tonight, who's a member of the County School uh, group down in King of Prussia. Uh, I'm happy to take up whichever permit, whichever portion of this application you'd like to deal with. You just opened the earth movement I, Yeah, and I don't think the limited site plan and hearing process has been open either. I think this is the first presentation that the board is is having with respect to the, either the limited site plan or the earth movement. Um, I think you're correct. Am I right on that? Yes. Okay. Um, we're happy to start that presentation with the uh, earth movement, earth movement. permit. Um, I believe Mr. Meyer would like to speak to that. Fine. All right. Um, have, you, have you done calculations on how much? We did, and we, we did, and we submitted them to. Um, um, well, actually, the town planner isn't there, but we submitted them all all the documentation to John Field, the uh, code official, building official, uh -huh. and yeah. certified it with uh, the review of the of the engineer. And it's similar to what the board has seen or maybe not read. Here's a copy of it. I, I have several. Um, and it respects uh, the whole, it goes back into the detail of how the site was designed, um, respecting limited earth movement. Do you have anything from the building inspector um, saying that he accepts this and, and, and accepts your calculations? We met with him last week. Um, he asked us to get it certified by the professional engineer. We did. I had a, a phone message from him today that asked me to submit to him the calculations, so we are in the process of doing that. He was out of the office. Right. So we'll have to continue this. Problem. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I, I've got to tell you, it, it, I don't, I realize that things have been sort of disrupted, but it's, it's highly unusual to accept a document right at the hearing. Usually, we like to have our own 
consultants take a look at materials that are being presented. I'd, I'd also like to get the building inspector's acceptance of the calculations. What we have here is is an engineer's statement, but I want, but we need to have it verified by our consultant and the, and the town official. So I don't. I think until we have those documents at hand, all we have here is a document from your engineer is saying, I guess, I haven't read it, but say, I imagine he says that there's, it's, okay, does he say that it's under the, the 1,000 cubic yard limit, or? Yes, sir, it does. 180 uh, cubic uh, yards, is that right? It's estimated 80, 850 cubic yards or less. It's the last, that's for removal. That's for removal? That's for removal. That's for no, but no, that's turn to the second the page. Right. Second page, the movement, this movement. Okay, that's all about. Well, is, is that? Oh, okay. Wait a minute. This is removal. Wait a minute. Is, 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 he's talking about 850 yards of cubic yards of material moved, but he's also talking about 180 cubic yards being removed. So that is, sir, is we met uh, with the uh, previous town planner and town staff to derive this back in the uh, September, October time frame. And we met with John just recently again. There's certain exclusions that are made at the town level uh, with regards to the septic system. It, it, those items are excluded. This is what was explained to me in the calculations. So we took all of those, and the net of it is that result. What is that result? Less than 800 approximately less than a thousand cubic yards of, of movement doesn't actually say that anywhere i believe it, it talks said, about 850 cubic yards of a certain kind of material being moved but it also talks about a certain amount of material being removed and when you add the two together it's more than a thousand cubic yards but it never it, uh, unless i'm missing something unless the removal is included earth removals earth movement they're two separate calculations there. The removal is movement. And the so, removal is in the, is in the total calculation. It doesn't say that. It actually does not say that. Any and all loam on site will be pushed, stockpiled, screened, and reused in a, on the improved site. This movement will cause a temporary profile change. This movement is estimated to be 850 cubic yards or less. No, but then removal. under removals, earth removals from the site are limited to blah, 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 to be less than 180 cubic yards of material. So removal and movement are treated as two distinct calculations. And when you add the two together, they add up to more than 1,000 cubic yards. So what we don't have here is the, a, a statement from this engineer that says the net with deductions is less than a thousand cubic yards. We don't actually have that statement right, right now. And maybe that's why the building inspector is asking you to provide calculations. Mr. Eli, in any case, we want to have this information prior to a hearing so that our engineer, our consultant, could review it, check it, certify it in his own you know, way, Mine. you know, yes, for on, you know, for the benefit of the town. So, we, you know, we do need that information from that, him as well as uh, I would presume in writing from John Fields. Yeah. You know, we, we need to have that. Down. Just for, um, so I don't need to call at 7 o'clock in the morning. For the, the, these particular bylaws, John's, how we've been handling them in the past, I have not been reviewing. John reviews them and signs off on, on the numbers. So there's, there's one person looking at them for consistency of how the calculations are prepared and presented. But in this case, and I understand I you have you issues with that. I'm just saying that you've kind of directed them that would be John and the consultant. And I'm kind of saying, up, up in, it's always just been the building Not always. <clears throat> Again, just for consistency. Not we have always. The very I can, first one. I can give you a couple of examples, um, but let's see where let's see where this goes. First of all, we need to get get a definitive statement from somebody 
but the net result is going to be of less than a thousand cubic yards removed and moved. It's the, it's, they're, they're not isolated. And then that's with the deductions. And then we need to get the calculations so that we can verify that those that those numbers are correct. We, we it may be a straightforward operation. It's not a big site. It should be fairly easy, but it, it may be worth a second set of eyes. A second set of eyes. I think the I think the board should recognize that this this application has been you know, fitted with starts and stops. I spoke with Mr. Fields this morning, and his position was until the board requests that he take a look at it, he's not obliged. Probably not going to. He has seen the report that's in front of you. He seems to be consistent with that, but he would like to see the cut and fill, which we're going to provide to you. But I think the board needs to request that Mr. Fields review that and submit something in writing to this board so we have something before. So I, I apologize, Mr. Ailer, if that hasn't been done before, but I think that this is the first, this is my second appearance here. It was here April 1st, if you recall, when the board could not act on this uh, application because the town plan wasn't on board. So with all due respect, we'd be happy to get in touch with Mr. Fields first thing tomorrow to give him what he needs so the report could be given to the board. That's fine. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about Pine Brook. Pine Brook didn't require uh, John Fields to, to take a look at the, at the earth movement, remember? Right. I'm just saying. Okay. Um, okay. That's fine. Do we, have, do we have something to go forward with on that? We'll board? have to continue the hearing. Well, I understand that, but do, do, I, do I have a clear indication that the board is making a request that Mr. Fields look at, at the proposal? Sure. Okay, that's right. fine. John Field of Well, I think what we're going to have to do, what I would, the way I would, I would probably set this up, because frankly, this is unusual. We've usually, anyway, if we, if we ask, if you send John Field an email tomorrow, this is what we're working for you to take a look at. Um, then, then that would, I guess, get the break, break, start to break up the log jam. Um, that's fine. Okay. That'd be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're claiming that we're exempt from, from the bylaw, and if that's not the case, then we'll, we'll go for this. Why are you exempt from the bylaw? Because of the movement not being less than 1,000 cubic yards. Oh, I see what you're saying. In other words, you're under the trigger. You're not exempt, it's just that you don't need to have a hearing. Okay. That's fine. We're, all, we do, all we're looking for is the calculations that demonstrate that. So we're going to continue the hearing. So we'll continue the hearing until the fourth. So, so you're saying that you're exempt from the earth movement? No, no. they're no. saying that the, he's he, it's inaccurate. The, the, he, they're, they're going to claim that they're moving less than the trigger. And therefore, they don't need a special permit to, to move the material. I believe, I believe the bylaw states that we're exempt from applying for a permit. Um, if you can demonstrate that right. move or moving less than that's our contention. Thousand, it is your it may be your contention, but your the numbers on these on, the, on in this document don't support that right now. They don't. We've got 180 plus 850. Okay. So we're going to continue that particular part of this uh, hearing until June 4th? June 4th. Okay. Is there another meeting in May? Another meeting Is there another May? planning board meeting in May? There's no. Uh, later on schedule. It's not scheduled, but later in May. Well, this is the May 20th meeting, but our agenda is all filled up. Filled. Okay, so you're continuing this to June. Um, so later, okay, we're 745 for 255 Mary. Yeah. yeah, let's give that 45 minutes. Yeah. Let's say, yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may address that, if indeed the, the agenda is filled for the later, 
Um, I was before this board on April 1st, and I, I asked the board to see whether there was the possibility that this hearing could be conducted without the presence of the town planner. And the, the board graciously decided it and uh, chose not to. Um, but at that time, I did express some, some vital concerns that the applicant had with respect to extensions for purchase and sale agreements and extensions for mortgage commitments. And if there's any way that this board could see, and it's cost thousands of dollars to get these extensions. So if there's any way that this board could somehow slip this matter onto its agenda uh, for the later in May hearing, I, I certainly we most appreciate it and, and graciously accept it if the board could do that. Okay, we'll, we'll think about it, but, our, but the agenda's filled up to, I think it's 10, 30 or 11 o'clock. We'll be at 2 in the morning. Yeah, but that's you. <laughs> You're getting paid to be here until 2 o'clock. <laughs> uh, I've said that position before. The 20th is, um, is agenda items till 9.30. Nine thirty. With some additional business afterwards. Yeah. Um, some certificates of road, some minutes. We'll, we'll run over. Um, sure. So we're, st we're still with the additional little business we're talking temporary. Yeah, at minimum, probably 11, 11, 30. But by the time we're finally finished, I mean, take a look. Look at the clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be here <sighs> Let's see how we do on the material. Yeah, let's see. And let's see if it's on the next part. You might right. not even have to have it, right? Not. We might not. It's not that perfect. Well, let's see what let's see what the evidence shows. Okay. It, it could be a five minute <coughs> open and thing. Um, could I uh, ask Dave, Dave if you could sort of help facilitate this with John Fields, just so that it goes through as smoothly as possible, and you know we get your opinion on it, which we get your opinion a lot, and I, I treasure it. Mike, what if you get John to CC me? You get it to him. I'll be happy to. I give him everything he asked for. <laughs> yeah, and, and then just start it. No, you're okay with that. So, yeah. He wanted to join convention yeah. squares. So fine. Okay. He knows what he wants. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay. okay. That that takes care of that one. Now we're going to open the open the uh, public hearing limited site plan review. You, no, we did, we did have a session of this hearing uh, because you presented and we had comments. Uh, we had a butters. And we had a butters. Uh, no, we, this, we, we actually have opened this hearing. This is a continuation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your engineer presented. Yeah, right. right. It's been a while, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a, just a continuation. Yeah. We're, and, the, and in fact, the only issue that I know of that's outstanding right now is the, tra the traffic calculations. All the rest of it, we've already reviewed and sort of gone through. So, um, so you, you're, this is your traffic. Uh, yes, Mr. Yeah. Miller is here from the CHS and Is he prepared to make a presentation? He is, yes. All right, could you please do that? Your name is? Robert take a look at, uh, I guess the board had some concerns about uh, the parking situation, my understanding that uh, the proponent had met with John Fields and, and reviewed circulation elements and, and the parking supply. And I don't want to speak for John, but I understood that he was comfortable with it. The board had their own questions or concerns about it. So we were asked to take a look uh, and see what you know, this type of facility would generate uh, for parking demand. Uh, and we also took a look at the operations at the driveway in terms of site distance and uh, capacity of the driveway to be able to bear the system. The key that we're trying to 
look at for this uh, limited site plan review, if we're subject to that, is basically we don't want any parking issue on site potentially spill out onto the roadway system and cause congestion on the main line of 117. So that's basically what our task was, to try and gather some data, make some projections, and, and see if we're going to be able to meet that standard. Um, so the first thing that I was given was a report from the Goddard School, uh, and I may have to uh, uh, explain roughly what the Goddard School is. This is a, a, a prototype school design where they have two standard prototypes. We've got 400 of these sites all over the country. So this is not just another mom and pop daycare center. These guys have been building these all over the place. So these similar questions have come up in front of other boards and they've done some investigation on that. So that was my starting point for reviewing what we thought might be appropriate for consideration of parking. Based on the studies that they did for three exact sites, 8,000 square foot prototype, and by the exact, I mean the exact layout of the building, the exact number of students, identical to this prototype. So in every way, like a McDonald's would be similar to another McDonald's of that prototype, these stores would be exactly the same. So the, the Jersey data that they looked at for three sites just like this one, experienced uh, parking vans of 30 to 35 cars. So based on the study that they did of similar, uh, very similar <laughs> uh, study, they suggested the parking advance would going to be something like 30 to 35 cars. They are recommending, uh, the Goddard School through their engineer uh, was recommending that, okay, well then we should provide roughly 30 to 35 uh, parking spaces. Uh, that was the conclusion of their report. But we wanted to do our own independent review. We wanted to take a look at a local uh, site to get some empirical data of another Goddard School in Wayland same prototype, 8,000 square feet, same building layout, same number of students. So the operation will give us a better sense of, well, Jersey's Jersey, what, what, what does it uh, act like in Massachusetts? So we did our counts. Uh, we Basically what we do is we did um, uh, a parking accumulation from roughly uh, 645 in the morning. I got there a little early, uh, so I noticed that there was one car parked. Uh, at uh, between 6.45 and 7 o'clock. That's the start of the day. The director had gotten there in advance the rest of the, uh, the staff and the rest of the arriving students. So that's when our, our, our study started. We uh, did traffic counts, keeping track of traffic coming in and out of the site, took it, taking snapshots of the parking demand along the way so that we could develop parking accumulation throughout the day. So we, we had uh, the traffic counts, for the exiting traffic and entering traffic uh, and snapshots of parking counts before. <coughs> and then if you subtract the entering volume from the exiting volume, you get a rough snapshot of the accumulation over that 15 minute period. So we did that from uh, 6.45 to uh, 6.15 at night. Uh, and basically at the end of our count, there wasn't a car on the site. What we noticed uh, at the Wayland facility was that there was a peak demand uh, in the evening of roughly 34 cars. And it turns out in discussing with many conversations with the, uh, the William facility, that facility had one special program that we're not proposing at this site. They have a visiting uh, Mass Bay College visiting student uh, activity that was occurring on that. We were able to get the schedules for the five students that were visiting on that day, when they arrived, when they left, we were able to take those, uh, that program out of the Western facility because that's not going to be proposed at the Western facility. As a matter of fact, this is the first year that Wayland had ever tried that. So as it turned out, the two uh, the students from Mass all drove single car to the site. <laughs> so each of the students represented one parking demand. So we stripped that out of the projection uh, for the Western facility because that program won't be at the Western facility. So taking that out, and both of the both the Wayland without adjustments and the Wayland facility uh, with uh, stripping out the program, which is our estimate of peak parking demand, indicated a peak parking demand at 5:15 or a 15-minute period of 32 cars. So we have a total uh, proposed parking supply of 32 spaces. Uh, that includes two handicapped spaces. So. 
we recognize that 32 spaces to accommodate a demand for 32 spaces is a bit tight, particularly if two of them are going to be handicapped spaces, which may go underutilized. I will note that at least I saw one uh, elderly couple, maybe they were grandparents, and they took a long time getting their kid in and out of the site. They weren't afraid of using handicapped spaces, but to the extent that handicapped spaces are typically a little underutilized, we're right at the threshold of what we think we need for parking and right in the range of what the Goddard School for all of their other facilities are recommending for this prototype. So we felt, okay, just meet the parking demand. Well, it would be nice to have a little bit more than just meet the parking demand, particularly with our concern, uh, as expressed as what we're looking at, is that we wouldn't want any potential backups in flow in the parking due to not enough parking spaces to meet the demand to potentially impact the roadway system. Um, so, in looking at that, we, and through several discussions with uh, um, employees and the director of the Wayland facility, we were able to start picking apart certain things they were doing at that school that might give us a little bit more breathing room. One of the programs they had which was just a capacity uh, uh, absorber, is that at the end of the day, uh, the current director of the school, one of the owners of the school, likes to have a little one-on-one uh, -on -one time with the, the staff and the, and the kids. And they have, uh, so they offer the kids on the way out as the parents are trying to pick the kids up and get out of the parking lot uh, and hopefully open that space up for the next parent. They offer them crackers and a chance to pick out one of 150 stickers. So if you get a toddler figuring out whether he wants a banana or a star, it takes a little while. And as you start to, uh, as you start to have one kid taking a little too long for that activity, um, oh, I don't want that cigarette, then the kid gets backed up behind him. Inside the building, you start seeing a queue of the kids waiting to get the crest. So no bananas for these kids. Well, <laughs> hang on, just a moment. No choice. That's right. Well, just just provide them land. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. No choice. Those, the, the crackers and stickers could be issued in the classroom before the parent arrives. So for the rest of the audience, we're not going to take away the bananas or the, or the crackers. But I think we could do it in a, in a more intelligent way. And that's what happens when you start working in a facility and running it for a couple of years. You start to recover things, especially when the traffic guy shows up and says, why did this guy take 16 minutes to get out of the site and this guy only takes six? So there's fluctuations as to accounting for that variability. And again, that, those numbers were not the average for the Wayland facility. I didn't have a chance to do a detailed, statistically valid uh, operation of pickup drop-off activity in terms of time, because I was doing all these observations personally, so I had a lot to keep track of. But I did take a couple isolated counts, because I'd notice, okay, that woman just arrived, and she's taking her kid into the morning, and okay, that's the same one woman leaving. So, all right, note the time. So I took a couple of snapshots in the morning, and the morning activity was occurring much faster than the evening. So that was the first observation. While we were, while I was taking counts, Faraz uh, uh, came out to me and said, how are things going? I said, well, looks like the evening pickup is going, oh, that's because of the cracker program, I'll tell you about it later. So that was one example that we said, we gotta get rid of it. Anything that will increase the turnover efficiency of each parking space used, is going to greatly enhance the availability of parking for the teachers. Eliminating that program would wipe out, in my estimate, four to six minutes in the turnover per space. So that's one example of a program change where we can see a reduction in the parking demand by getting increased efficiency in turnover of spaces. So you're going to forbid them to have a cracker party? Well, <laughs> during, <laughs> during, the, during the critical... Like work? No, well... Like, they get the yeah, to another time. Tell me, yeah. did you um, yeah. spend the same kind of time looking at this site on uh, North Road? Uh, I'm sorry, which That's Route 117? Route 117. Oh, oh, did it? Oh, yes. Well, for this site, there's nothing on the site to count. It used no. to be daycare <coughs> facility. So what we did to uh, analyze operations at, at the site driveways is based on the observations we made at the school, we could see clear peaks. You know, in the morning, there was gonna be a peak, uh, and in the evening, there was gonna be a peak. 
So we did traffic counts out at the existing, uh, at the proposed facility on 117, at the, at the driveway location to establish the through traffic going by. There's no turning traffic in and out of the existing site, but we did. I, I understand that part. Yeah. You know, I, I travel that road a lot in the rush hour times. Usually try to avoid that for obvious reasons. Yes, so and that was the, the second part of it. And there's a little bit more to talk about on parking, but just to touch on that point real quickly. So we picked up uh, traffic counts, trucks and cars, passing the site in, in the morning peak hour from 7 to 9, which overlaps with the commuter peak period, and in the evening from 4 to 6. So that was what we used to establish, well, how is the driver going to operate? We know what the trip generation is for the proposed facility. We know what the parking generation is the proposed facility so we can take those uh, uh, trip generation estimates uh, based on the Wayland facility uh, without <coughs> change which is well we no, no change programs here's what the driveway counts going to show and then uh, added those to the morning peak hour and the evening peak hour to analyze the operations at the driveway so uh, in our analysis we looked at the exiting movements uh, to see if there was going to be any backup on site that would cause an issue uh, and the, in, in our analysis, the operations of the drive were an LOSD, which is moderate delays that resulted in roughly a 40-foot car queue at, at the worst case. And this is similar to what we observed at Wayland. It was maybe a two to three car at max exiting queue uh, during the worst time in the evening. That was the worst queue I saw. I, I'd expect that we'd see anywhere from one to two cars, depending on if the flow is different, obviously, in front of Wayland as this one. But the analysis would suggest that the vehicle queues exiting would be minimal. Now, uh, I noticed in an email that I just got today circulating, we hadn't analyzed the left turn in. And the reason for that is there was only an estimated 24 cars making the left turn in, opposed to by 498 cars. Uh, heading in, in the opposite direction, opposing that flow. So that would operate without even analyzing it, roughly at a B, uh, maybe even an A level of service. So it's not going to have significant operational issue, and that would be the crit you'd expect the delay for that left turn movement into the site to be significantly less than the left turn out, because the left turn in only has to wait for a gap in traffic in one direction. So obviously there's no delay for the right turn in, the left turn in is only opposed by one direction of traffic. The left turn out is opposed by both directions of traffic. So we have to wait for a gap in both directions to be able to make the maneuver. So the analysis of the driveway say, well, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot to look at operationally at the driveways. We also looked at the site distance of the driveways, the site civil engineer who prepared the plans that also looked at this. And uh, we're well in excess of what we're going to need for the emergency stopping site distance. Uh, at both driveway locations, and actually <coughs> only the exiting <coughs> traffic is going to have an issue with sight lines. Uh, he looked at it, both sight lines at both the entering and exiting driveway, <coughs> but realistically no one's exiting out of this driveway, so you don't need to worry about that sight distance. However, he measured both, and they both exceeded the stopping sight distance by a good deal, and a desirable intersection sight distance, which is another measure of effectiveness, and we exceeded that as well. So. The posted speed limit was, I believe it was 30 miles an hour. We increased that by 10%, which is a, a, a 10 miles per hour as a design speed. Uh, and that's what we tested the site distance of the driveways. And that seemed to be not an issue. So from a traffic standpoint, not considering any operations on the site, the traffic didn't seem to be a heavy lift. We had roughly, uh, and I, I don't want to get this wrong, so let me just put that real quick. Well, it was roughly uh, 56 cars entering, 56 cars exiting during the peak period. 50, 56 cars. 56 an hour. 56 an hour. 56 in, 56 out. Peak hours being? Peak hour being seven, the weekday. Yeah, the, seven, the actual peak four, hour six. was, I believe it was uh, 7.15 to 8.15. And uh, in the uh, afternoon, it was a little earlier than I would typically expect for a peak hour on, on, a, on a busy road. But I believe that was 
uh, I believe that was 415 to 515. It's documented in the back of the appendix, and it's been some time since I wrote the report, so I apologize for not having those right at my fingertips. But uh, in any case, yeah, during that busiest hour of, of the uh, roadway, we superimpose the busiest hour of the Wayland facility. Now, they may not coincide, they probably would be pretty close, but we looked at the peak uh, parking generation, observed at the Wayland facility, and superimposed that on the local roadways. Uh, so we think the traffic is not necessarily going to be the hunt, um, but that's for the board to decide, obviously. But we do want to make sure that we have adequate circulation and parking. Now, I want to point out a couple things on the site plan that kind of separate this uh, from a typical layout of a parking lot in that we have a one-way entrance and a one-way exit, creating one-way circulation throughout the site. We have 24 feet of pavement for the circulation aisles. So we're only expecting a flow rate of less than one car a minute coming into the site in a one-way flow pattern through the site. And uh, so that's a little bit more ideal than a shopping mall in the parking lot. I mean, in a, in a supermarket, or in a retail facility, you're going to want to have a lot of excess parking because you don't know which row has that open space. But when you can pull into a site and virtually see every space, and depending on where we allocate the teacher and staff parking, uh, I agree with Rob's recommendation that the entrance drives and exit drives should probably be allocated for, for uh, uh, low turnover staff parking. But you could tailor it so that once you enter the site, you have immediate view of every available parking space for staff, uh, for the parents to be able to pick up and drop off. So, you know, in some cases, it's, it makes a lot of sense to provide extra excess parking, but in a small lot with one-way circulation with a community of parents that are going to be there a couple of days a week, this is an occasional trip where I go to buy a hammer at Home Depot and I can't even figure out where to park. This is something that I'm familiar with. Could you put extra spaces on this site if you had to? Well, there's a retaining wall. We, we did take a, I'll get into that briefly. There's a couple of constraints that we're dealing with in terms of retaining walls and a layout as proposed has an opportunity to provide the spaces that we have. We did incorporate some of uh, Bob's comments relative to some circulation elements. <coughs> the location of the dumpster, and this is the old plan, we had submitted a new plan uh, and, and met with John Fields, and I supplied that to Bob as well. Um, to reorient the dumpster space, uh, Bob's group, uh, the town's consultant, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Michel. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Michel's group ran an auto turn template analysis to make sure that the deliveries could be uh, adequately accommodated and he found that the radius as initially proposed was a little too tight for the uh, the anticipated dumpster to be able to get to the dumpster and make that turn into the site so the radius uh, recommendations that he had made were addressed on the, on the revised plan I don't have seen them who's seen the revised plan I, I sent a copy to Bob by email and, uh, the group can speak. It, Bob. no sir I believe I'm not going to speak for you but I think it addressed the landscaping so, and Dave, I think you've seen it as well? Yeah, is there any questions I have? Um, and there's also a change in the orientation. Okay. So the, ori the orientation dumpster, uh, the dumpster was shifted to so that that temp tr template could be a little bit more efficient. So now we're talking about a plan that, that, that's not, that doesn't act, reflect what you're pointing to. Uh, I, and I apologize. <coughs> I didn't produce the plans, I just yeah. produced the traffic report, but I did get a copy of the revised plan. I got Bob Misho's comments on, this is what I need you to address. Uh, he also commented on some of the signage, and I commented that in my study as well, that uh, we wanted to make sure that it was properly signed to encourage that one-way flow. We narrowed the existing driveway entrances to 16 feet. We'll have one-way uh, uh, signs pointing in with uh, <coughs> paint, uh, painted arrows at the entrance drive and do not enter signs facing the parking lot okay. so parents know, oh, you're not supposed to go back that way. And does the revised plan show all that? Yes, it does. Um, Is, does anybody have the revised, the actual current plan? It would be okay. nice to have the consultants actually present the current version of this. Yeah, I, I apologize. Recognizing that none of us have seen it. I apologize. I can 
uh, I have a digital copy of it that I can forward to whoever. But, I, but, for, but it, it's a minor change. Basically, the idea was that with the uh, current alignment of this dumpster space, it was going to potentially interfere with parking at this location. Now, granted, the deliveries at the existing Wayland School fall outside the school hours. They just, there won't be anybody on the site uh, before or after school. It, it's a ghost town. So, but still, there, there's an opportunity to maybe make the access to the dumpster a little easier. So all we did, if you can see my, and I apologize for the crap. Right. Oh, you got You can use our consultants. <laughs> No. Okay, great. Thanks. No. Uh, that's okay. I'll say this. Right side up, upside down. So this is the dumpster orientation we're talking. Flipped everything over. Yeah, yeah I do apologize. You <laughs> want to keep it the exact. That's all right. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do it. This is almost a more logical way to look at the okay. site. But um, in any case, this is that orientation I was telling you. Originally, the dumpster location was like this, meaning that, well, if there was anybody here or even this landscape island could make that a difficult maneuver, just turn it like that, and then the dumpster would be able to get in a little bit more easily to that space. So. Uh, to grab the dumpster at this location here. So um, there, is there, there's no car parked next to the dumpster slot, is that the idea? How does the, how does the truck pull out of there? Yeah, there's, uh, now, uh, during the course of the uh, operations of the school, we do have a director's space located in front of the dumpster. It's deep enough where a car can be parked with the uh, fences closed for the dumpster, and we can take advantage of that as a parking space. But when the deliveries, uh, or well, the pickups for the trash are gonna occur, there'll be no one outside. And uh, so they'll, they'll be able to easily pull in, grab the piece, the front loader, drop it in, and pull out of the site. So the, the Bob's off, uh, your traffic consultant had uh, pulled it, done the auto turn template to make sure that those turns would work effectively. Um, I, I haven't seen specific comments back. I don't see the arrows or anything. Are they there? Uh, they were on the original plan. They may oh. not be in this, but they're documented in my traffic study. So the language that we had in my traffic study after discussing this uh, with Mike is like, okay, there's a couple things missing on the site plan. I need these arrows, I need these signs, we need this. We're gonna Bob made this. We don't have a we don't we don't have a document that records everything. Well, <laughs> maybe we could discuss that. Uh, yes, uh, I'm just saying. You know, until we get something a, filed that's like an accurate representation, everything that's going to go on on the site, we can't, we have to continue the hearing. Because the town didn't have a planner for roughly a month, we didn't get Bob's review in a timely manner to be able to make these changes and uh, give a big loss of presentation. We, we're, we're, a, we're a little bit hamstrung. But with that said, I'd like to finish the presentation and then open it up Absolutely. to the Absolutely. I'm just pointing okay. out, okay. you know, that... Uh, well, and, and open it up to the board for the rest of the questions and then Bob may have... I mean, this hasn't been filed. You have to realize that. What? So... My study was filed on March 19th. Yeah, I know. So, uh, uh, in any case, a couple of uh, minor additions uh, on the uh, signage. And I think, you know, with the exception of providing a stop sign, heading out of the site. This is a T intersection, and I, I don't like clutter. Honestly, I think the stop sign is an overkill on signage, but anything relative to one-way uh, pattern makes perfect sense, and I, I completely agree. And I wouldn't fight anyone that wanted a stop sign. I think in a town like Weston, I don't think it's appropriate. But that's that's your traffic consultant's call. I mean, you don't have a stop sign at the end of your driveway, and it's a T intersection, and you know what to do. So, some towns like overkill on signs, I don't. But that's the board's decision. And if Bob agrees with that assessment, then we won't put it on the plan. If he says, no, I want it, we put it on the plan. It's not a cost issue, it's, not a, it's just a pet peeve of mine. Um, so with that said, um, there was a couple other, so that's the circulation of it. It's, it's critical to think, like, when do I need to provide massive amount of excess parking? This is not the situation that you need that. You have 
low turnover spaces of the employees, you have frequent users by the parents, but you still want to provide some cushion. We realize we're right up to that. So the first program will be, let's see if we can increase the utilization of the parking spaces. That one program I spoke about earlier, we'll do that. If and I could just run the clock back a little bit. Sure. My question was, if you had, if, is, there, is it possible Oh, 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 more parking. More parking. I'm sorry. To the, to the, to the plan. Yeah, yeah. You said, well, if I only had the, the current plan, I could show it to you. And so uh, here's the current plan. Okay. Well, we did investigate some potential additional parking spaces. We might strain to pick up a couple of spaces, but it'll impact the landscaping. And as a group, I think they decided, well, you know, if the board is going to insist on paving the world, then we'll pave the world. But our preference would not be. One, one quick spot that you could pick up is in this landscape island here by the pedestrian path. You could provide one more parking space right there, shift the landscaping over here, but you lose the pedestrian path into the building and, and flow through the parking lot. So you gain one space, but at what cost? So, you know, if it was absolutely crucial and the board was insisting, oh, well, that's the one space I need, well, then we could probably get one here. We also look at the potential of providing two more spaces in the landscape island up front. Uh, I think these would have to be staff spaces on either side of the light structure, uh, and it's a little bit unusual that they'd be, here's the parking here, there'd be a parking space here, break for the light pole, a parking space here. We think we could possibly get two more in this location. Is it in the back? It's in the back. Yeah. So, uh, but okay. there's a landscape element here. I, I'm not, you know, uh, if, is there opportunity in the future to be able to pave that if we needed to? Well, maybe. Is that appropriate to do at this juncture? We think that we can manage the, the parking situation on this floor better than the city on the We think that implementing a parking program that makes sense will gain us a couple of extra spaces so that we don't have to lose elements of the plan that were well thought out and, and already reviewed. Now, if that's something that's going to make or break the project, well then, okay. But there's reasons why we didn't add those to the plan. I think, I think it's really logical to be able to pick up a space here, a little redirection of this space. I've laid something out just as a sketch, and ge geometrically, I can get one right here. Uh, I haven't laid- You know what, just a second. Thank you. We get it. Okay. We get it. And, uh, yeah, and, and what you're saying is if in the future sometime we notice it's a big backup on uh, 117, we can come back and say, okay, but we understand what you're saying. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the other element um, of the high turnover parking spaces, obviously, and I, I agree with Bob on this point, controlling the staff use of parking spaces is going to be the highest measure of control. You can, uh, the, the existing Wayland facility already has a newsletter they issue out to parents and they provide parking updates and that sort we of thing. We understand all that too. Okay. Uh, well, we I actually, we're, we're actually trying to stay, what she's doing is she's being politely oh. saying, you, you need to try to think about that. Oh, right I, I'm all, well, with that said, uh, there's a couple more elements okay. that could go into more detail. Yep. But the bottom line is, we're a little tight on parking, but we feel that we can make that work. The one program that we eliminate at the Wayland facility is going to help us get a couple of spaces. And if we do... You already said those two things twice before, so... It's my recap. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. Okay. Well, I, I thank the board uh, for the amount of time that we have to answer any questions. Well, we're, we're going to hear from our... Oh, sure. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Bob. Thank you. Uh, for everybody, anyone who doesn't know, this is the Planning Board's Traffic Consultant, Bob Michaud, who's had a chance, I think, to look at yes. the applicant's um, report and you have some comments. Correct. Uh, so we actually identified a scope uh, that uh, included the parking studies that Mr. Woodland had mentioned, the, the traffic council on 17. They've conducted uh, the, the prepared uh, a study that complies with what we had recommended for scope. Uh, no surprise that 117 is a busy road, so uh, the focus really of my review was, was to look at the on-site parking demand characteristics, circulation aspects to ensure that what is being proposed makes sense and provides a reasonable 
accommodation of anticipated demand. Uh, the data, as Mr. Woodland pointed out, suggests that uh, in the absence of any specific controls of a Goddard facility, whether it's here or in New Jersey, uh, it suggests the need for between 32 and 35 parking spaces. And when you look at industry standards for these uses, uh, those industry standards suggest that same number uh, within a couple of spaces. So if this were uh, a site that had never been in, in operation and, and you know, had a blank slate, what you'd want to do is provide the equivalent of about 35 parking spaces here. It is a blank slate. Um, correct. The constraints of this particular site um, provide no more than 32 parking spaces. Why, why does the site restrict it to 32 spaces? Based on the program that the, the program has submitted, uh, the building orientation and size, uh, the <coughs> shape of the lot, the proposed landscaping, the driveway uh, configuration, uh, this plan in its maximum state, its most optimal state, provides 32 parking spaces. So the point of concern that we raise in our review is that while uh, on certain days of the week that particular supply may make sense and pro will provide a reasonable base for operations, there will be other days of the week, particularly on the days that they survey, Tuesday, which happens to be, as I understand, their peak operating day. Uh, that you may from time to time have a constraint here. Uh, people may be attempting to find spaces that don't exist, which means one of two things. It means you're going to re recirculate through the site because you've missed your opportunity for a space here and you're beyond the point of return. Uh, you're going to have to recirculate back to get to that space right, because of the one-way circulation patterns proposed. Or you're going to park somewhere on the site uh, curbside, so to speak, or, or in an undesignated area. Um, that's not ideal. So what we suggest uh, and, and have discussed with, um, with Mr. Whitland is the notion of parking demand management practices as one potential measure to ensure that the proposed supply of 32 will work reasonably well. Um, the most controllable part of that equation is who gets to park on the site. At uh, a staffing level of roughly 20 park spaces, between 15 and 20 park spaces for staff, what that really means is that in the morning, at 8 o'clock in the morning, or at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, all but 10 to 12 of these spaces will already be parked by staff in the absence of any specific policy or control. The two of those spaces are actually HP handicapped accessible spaces. For you know, a net supply of 10 spaces to accommodate pickup for 110 students. Pretty tight. Um, so by controlling how many staff are allowed to park on site, rather than 15 to 20, maybe only 10 to 15, actually get the right to park on the site. That's probably the most effective way to open up well, spaces. Where else are they going to park? Don't know. Uh, that that's a suggestion that uh, we posed as a question to the applicant. Um, <coughs> Maybe a matter of policy to say well, we've got an arrangement with an area of land use, uh, uh, an adjoining it's business. Exactly. So so that's one aspect of. It works with an office park. You've got 1,800 cars, but I don't see a monitoring program for a thir for a 32 car parking lot. You know, it's I, overkill. I agree. So in the alternative. Um, what we've done is to look at the characteristics of Wayland uh, and uh, understanding that that represents uh, the high day, the peak day of operation. Uh, we know that on that peak day of operation, 110 students were on the site. Uh, so if you equate one to the other and you come up with a parking rate, what this plan can support applying those characteristics is an on-site enrollment number of about 90 students, not 110. That provides the flexibility that you need uh, given the constraints of the site here. Um, well, so here's another factor that you might have taken into consideration, Bob. I don't know. But um, you know that they were 
they were counting tra the traffic on Route 20 on the, on the Weston and the Waltham side of, of the interchange. Mm -hmm. And they had guys in lawn chairs with counters at every intersection on the interchange. Mm -hmm. What that tells me is that Polaroid's about to go into phase two planning. Mm -hmm. um, that means two million square feet of space <coughs> development, mm -hmm. a complete redesign of the, of the, of the Route 20, 128 interchange, mm -hmm. and 35,000, if, if the related proposal is roughly the same as the Moolah's, 35,000 vehicle trips a day, mm -hmm. coming, pumping down Route one, many of which pumped down Route 117. Right. The related proposal made 117 of it would, had, let's, let's put it this way, it had tremendously negative impact on Route 117. We're looking at cars today, but four years from now, five years from now, it's, it could be a drastically different traffic picture because it's just a mile up the road there. Um, I understand. Yeah, and as you know, uh, we've reviewed those filings. We understand that over time, you're going to have a lot of growth in this particular area. We understand that. And that's only one. Yes. I mean, there are two or three right in that area that are just... Green Street development. The whole Green Street development. Right. Uh, uh, there's at least one Boston Properties building, at least I think they're still thinking of it. I don't know this. That's, or the, it, maybe it's still Sam Park. <coughs> On the corner? Yes, that what I think of it as 760,000 square feet? 40 Green Street. Yeah, 40 Green Street. Um, I, yeah, I understand. I've got the boards that actually yeah. talk about this, so we well understand that consequence. Um, the context of our review is to look at what's there today uh, and understand site access and circulation primarily. Uh, don't deny that 117 is going to grow in importance over time. Don't deny that. Um, the level of traffic that's being proposed, I think, is accurately portrayed with what they've submitted in their traffic report for today. For today, uh, you know, the, the site itself had a cap enrollment number of 130 students. Uh, if it is to perform like Wayland, will be generating between 50 and 60 directional trips during those hours about a vehicle a minute. Um, when you split that demand between entering and exiting, uh, or east and west, so to speak, on, on uh, 117, what that really means is that if you're standing at the driveway and, and observing the number of left turns that are coming in, that the number of left turns is likely to range over that morning hour, for instance, uh, between 20 and 30 cars an hour. That's the, that's the range of traffic generation that this particular project is likely to add to 117. The applicant has not taken credit for the number of trips that may perhaps already be traveling on 117 as part of a commute to another facility, etc. So I think what's been presented in this study is reasonable. It reflects the operations at Wayland. I think the characteristics um, of the 117 quarter in some ways are reflective of what you'd see at 30 in Wayland. So I don't think that there's been any misrepresentation or you know mischaracterization of well, that. That's the problem with traffic studies that they they, all, they seem so often to conflict with people's own personal experience. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and I mean, well, here's if anybody that sat in traffic on Route 117 on North Avenue. Right. <laughs> no, no, I understand. So, and there are plenty of other commercial businesses along here. Yeah, let me, cleaning let me and, put it in another way. I come out of King's Grant Road. Yeah. And if I come out of there between 7 and 9, it takes me, you know, it could take me four or five minutes just to get on to 117, <laughs> unless someone decides to stop and be nice and let me in. Right. right. And you're now, taking left onto And I'll turn to go in town, which most of the people coming out of here will probably be turning to right mm -hmm. to go into town because that's where most of the work is. Maybe not, but I mean, you know, mm -hmm. maybe they're going to be turning up. But they're still going to be dealing with getting out into non-moving traffic, mm -hmm. which is not going to be getting out in 20 seconds. It's going to be, you know, 60, 80, you know, I mean, right. 180 seconds or so. Correct. So I view that as, well, for those people that can get in, once they get there, they may not be able to get out nearly as quick. Mm -hmm. 
you know, understand. And the and same is true uh, coming home, too. The traffic oh, is backed up. Right. Yeah. I mean, it backs up going, you know, in the morning oh, going eastbound, it backs up all the way to Lincoln. Yeah, which is a mile and a half to two miles. Okay, in the afternoon it backs up all the way in, you know to the bridge uh, over 128, mm -hmm. over 95. So it's about a quarter mile and that's where it's polar, just that's stopped. Polar. Yeah. yeah. That said, and I, I well understand those conditions. Um, will I have more of an effect. Business. More yeah. of an effect Situation. on the site itself than it would for. The travel on 117. Right? And what I mean is that um, it's not going to be extraordinarily difficult to make a left turn to get in here. I think there will be reasonable accommodation for that particular movement. The right turn is even easier. Right? So the issue is that once you're on the, this is like the Venus flytrap. Right? Right. How do you get up? Yeah. And, uh, and so that is an on site issue that an operator will need to deal with. So what I've done is a sensitivity analysis. We presented that in our peer review. Uh, so what if the distribution of trips is a little bit different than what they expect? Right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? So I've done that analysis, and it shows that you'll, you'll have additional queuing results and, and an additional delay. It'll approach capacity. The number of trips that it's affecting over the course of a one hour period, and exiting either left or right, given the dimensions of the driveway. It's a 16 foot driveway. So if you want to make a left, you're going to be, someone's going to be able to get around you if they, if they want to make a right turn. That's the general rule. That that number of left turns might be 20, perhaps 30 on the, the high side over the course of an hour. Um, so yes, it will be difficult. It will take time. And our models show that. The sensitivity analysis shows that. But what that relates to is a queue on the site is probably a couple of cars, maybe three at best. Which means that they're blocking Correct. all the cars that are parked in that. Correct. So one area. of the things that we suggest uh, in, the, in the parking policies, if this is to move forward, <coughs> is to have those spaces that are closest to the driveway designated for staff use so that they're not high turnover uh, parking areas. Right? So if you've got, if these were not designated that way, and we know that the demand here exactly matches the supply, um, that there may be a likelihood that a parent needs to park there, walk you know, a fair distance to the building front, and then back out with a queue that's blocking them, it makes it less efficient. If this were staff parking, you'd be less inclined to have that issue, and you'd simply be inconvenienced <coughs> and having to wait a minute or two to make that turn. So it's an on-site issue. Uh, we've identified it, we've quantified it. Um, well, two cars. Is the equivalent of you know when you consider the space between them right. of about it's about 40 feet. 40 feet. Yeah. Well, that's more than a couple of parking spaces. Right. These are each about uh, you know one, two, three, four. So so this this whole area right here. That whole right, that whole that, area. that's blocked. So so that's why we suggest that if this is to move forward, that that parking on, uh, essentially flanks the driveway and flanks this landscape area be specifically designated for staff use. So. If you're a parent, you're going to be more inclined to find a space closest to the building where you should be. But if they're filled, now you, you're really out of luck because Correct. now you've got to leave and come back. Right. So, and that's really the crux of our highest concern is what happens on a Tuesday or a high use day, um, you know, where that is stretched to its limit. Um, the likelihood is that the HP spaces will probably be used by non HP qualified vehicles. Yeah, people and will start doing their own I, thing. I, they, they, they go off the reservation, they stop obeying the rules because they've got to pick up their kid or they've got to drop off their kid or they've got to do what they have to do. Yeah. And so that's that's what happened with Dunkin' Donuts. That's why we started, started getting cars going the wrong way through, through the aisles. We started having people turning left right. over the barrier. Um, they just start doing whatever they need to do to satisfy what their goals are at the moment. And that's, that, that worries me. Right. And, and to be fair, because I'm very familiar with um, that scenario and that issue, this plan, as Mr. Woodland had pointed out, provides aisle widths that are traditionally, you know, the traditional two-way aisles, the 24-foot wide. Um, so there's a little more flexibility 
here than you would ordinarily have on this type of a property by nature of its being designated as a one-way flow. So, for instance, I, here's a scenario that could happen. Um, to the extent you needed a couple of extra spaces and someone didn't want to recirculate back to the site, that would likely mean that someone would park along this wider portion of the aisle. Not ideal. Um, Certainly. Yeah, we're postulating people not obeying the, the yeah. rules right. as the premise for making this work. I mean, that's, yeah. that, that, that's what worries me, that you're saying it's, it's, so, it's right on the edge. It absolutely it, if, is. If you rationalize it a certain way, <clears throat> and if you cancel some programs, and if you assign spaces, and then it looks like it's going to work right on the margin. And that, that bothers me that there's no, there's, there's, there's absolutely no room for error. No cushion. No cushion. Is, is the Wayland site larger than this site? No, it's, it's, it's identical in terms of its building size. And well, I know that. Moment. But does this, does, it's the land that it's on in Wayland, is it larger? It, it provides a total of 30, I think it's 35 parking spaces, correct? Yeah, I think it's 34 yeah. strike, but there's room, extra pavement to this little bit one extra, right? Yeah. If I could summarize it, the geometry, septic system is in the back, and the field is actually parked on top of. So the building is deeper into the lot, and the septic system is underneath the parking area. We couldn't do that on this site. Because of it's the also location. wider. <coughs> it's also wider, so they have an L parking where the playground is. Um, so, so it is a larger bit, site for the same program. It may be the, it may be roughly the same square acreage, square but, it's a but it's what a different shoehorn. But it's a different. It's a different configuration. Now the other consideration that you concern we have is that because of that constraint, because you're exactly matching your. your no flexibility yet. We're, we're in New England. Yeah. We have snowy winters. Uh, snow yeah, storage in. is very limited here, and so there would need to be an actively managed process of removing oh, snow. Oh, that's the site. You're right. That's one other factor. Right. So um, it, it, it's it's all kind of connected yeah, together so. here. Um, where there may be some opportunity for snow storage. Um, I don't it, think it works. It, it's it's it's. I, a I don't think it works. You can't. You can't. This, uh, the first comment by your traffic engineer was that these are like McDonald's, they, they're a certain size, they, oh, there's only one size, mm -hmm. or a bigger size, but, but, but that's it. Um, and so reducing the population, as Bob was suggesting, to, uh, to the, the number of students is not, a, not a, an option. Is that correct? Well, you're shaking your head. Actually, I'll no. have no one speak to that. Um, speaking to the reducing the population, it's it's either a 8,000 8, square foot building is what, what we're proposing. That's the size of the building. Yeah, Mr. that's Michaud the did, minimum. Mr. Michaud did make that in his presentation. That's in his report. Yeah. If you read his report, he's also saying that this is speculation. That it could possibly result in circulation issues. He didn't say it would. He oh, said it could. please. Everything we're talking about here says this well, is right taking, on the edge. You're taking some of his report. I'm giving you his report right back to you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a definition. It's, I, I can quote it to you. I don't think this works. Well, I, I, I don't think, think it works. Just I don't. Well, it does work. It's well, worked in 400 others. Says you. I, I, I'm hearing that it's right on. The, the, right the, there's, the no, there's no room for error here. It's, get, it's, it's, it's right on the edge. His, That's his what report, I'm hearing. Mr. Fayla, was that it was, it's a problem with staffing parking. And, and this, this applicant is willing to look at staffing parking if, in fact, this, as you say, if this doesn't work. There are many, there are many methods, many ways that this staffing parking could be eliminated or reduced to provide additional parking. That, that, you know, I don't want to be the traffic monitor of this daycare center where, you know, we, you know does it work, doesn't it work, are there too many cars? I mean, well, you're, you're this is a 32-car parking lot. We're not going to monitor the parking With all due respect, Mr. Chairman, the, the, the person in this town who, who conducts parking and who's authorized to speak about parking is the building inspector. He's already on record as saying that parking is adequate for the site. It's in the ZBA decision, it's in your bylaw. So if you went for asking for more parking based on speculation, with all due respect, I think that's unfair and I think it's an unreasonable condition to impose on this plan. 
This is a 48 section three permitted process. We've complied with every design standard, according to Mr. Woodland. Mr. Michaud has made speculation about what it could possibly happen if things failed. We're here tonight to tell you that if there is a failure, I don't have to. I don't have to agree with the building inspector. The last time I looked, this was the America. I, my opinion is this doesn't work. I am entitled to that opinion. I, I've heard the lawyer, presentation not, not from both the consultant. You can quote whatever you like. I don't personally think this works. Well, okay. All right. Uh, you know, you know I, if I, you I, don't I, if you don't agree with me, that I'm sorry, but that's that's my personal opinion. I don't think it works. Does anybody else want to say anything, or are you guys just going to sit here? Can I can, can I add from experience of 400? I'm I'm from Goddard System. Can I have your name, please? No, I'm N O A M. Ramati, R A M A T I. I'm the site, site and development and construction director for Goddard. And we, we're building about 20 a year throughout the country. We have 400 in uh, 35 states. And we actually recommend, we see that it works, you know, 30, between 30 to 35 uh, spots uh, per school for that, that configuration. Now, the way it works, typically the staff part, full staff, uh, in the school parks uh, permanently between 9 and 1 o'clock. And then, you know, people in the morning, they're coming in, uh, the staff, and then, you know, full staff between 9 and 1, and then at 1 o'clock they start leaving. The peak hours are between 7 and 9 o'clock typically, and 4 to 6 when they leave. We see turnaround of parking about, uh, for about 10, you know, 10 minutes for a parking spot. That means, you know, six six cars. I've just heard an hour and a half of presentation. No, but I'm saying if you have 100 and if you have, we have typically we have 85 percent occupancy in a successful school. That means around 110, 110 uh, kids. So now between these two hours, you have a, an opportunity to bring in 120 kids. Typically, this is staggered. You you bring in within these two hours typically 80% uh, of that or even less than that. So some kids come a little bit earlier, some kids come in until 11 o'clock. So it's not that you have 100, 100 kids coming in and out. I, we all it's understand that. that. We, we heard the presentation. We, we, we understand what was presented very clearly. It's not, this isn't the first time we've reviewed a traffic plan, and not the first time we've reviewed a traffic plan, a parking plan for a daycare center. We've reviewed a, a few of them. So we know what the, what the, what, what's in play here. I'm just giving you my personal I, opinion. I appreciate the that. other board members don't I, seem I, to I say that. anything and, to say, but I, I have. We're not here to be contentious, Mr. Chairman. Well, we're, we're, we're here to discuss. Sound that way. No, well, we're here to discuss this whole presentation. When I hear that you're, you've got a concern with, with traffic out on 117 because there are projected 865,000 square foot buildings. No, three miles two million road. square feet. Well, Two million, whatever it is. That's, Dude, that, once, again, that's more, more, more speculation. That's more speculation. Well, you can't it's not tie that into this. Well, it's not. It is it's not, not proposed. Speculation. It's not being built. Yes, it is. They, they've got to consider this. They've got to consider this project. Yeah. We don't have to consider theirs. <laughs> All right. I have two questions. Yes. Um, <coughs> question one is: There's a requirement in the zoning for. Um, each parking space shall include space for maneuvering and for access to and from the parking area shall be continually available and shall not be less than 350 square feet in area. Mm -hmm. So can you explain to me whether each of those parking spaces has the required area for the zoning? And secondly, um, the 117 is a state road, so has there been any state review? This would be the it's a state numbered route, but I don't believe it's on the mass DOT jurisdiction. Okay. Um, so, uh, your first question relates to that um, oddly phrased uh, provision of zoning. And um, my recollection of that is that it would equate to a dimensional area. Uh, of a 9 by 18 space, with, assuming that it has um, uh, sufficient backing there. I want to say to the midpoint of the 24 foot aisle. So if you took the dimension of 18 plus 12 and multiply by 9, you're going to end up with that 
that number. Okay. So the short answer is that uh, the, the spaces that are pr proposed here are standard size stalls with standard size circulation aisles, and I believe would meet that criteria. Though I have not personally done a calculation of that. Could you do that? Mm -hmm. You know, so ju just to clarify, oh, well, I'm just going to say to, to clarify. You're saying, in other words, the, the, the traffic flow. Someone could actually move out of a corridor, and then yeah, someone so, could move in. So uh, if you were to look at maneuvering requirements for an automobile, we've actually done a computerized model. Of the applicants uh, submit all so we'll oriented this way, 117 on top, the building here, landscape area. So. So this, this would demonstrate the maneuvering area required for a vehicle. And so if, if that same analysis were done for a stall, where they needed to make a 90 degree backing movement and then pull forward, uh, the backing area is, is considered part of the maneuvering area for access to that space. And so that equates to the 350 square feet. Okay. Um, you know, and, um, and while we're on the topic, uh, this analysis done on the original plan, you know, the orientation of the dumpster unit was here with the director's parking space here, it was a bit tight. And this is what Mr. Woodland was referring to in a comment we made that it would make more sense to have this angle, which they have since done on their plan, uh, to better accommodate that movement, um, you know, particularly as it was aligned with another parking space that was just offered. So they fixed that in their plan. The other had to do with um, the maneuvering area of a Cash truck. And so if they were swinging into the site, they would have, again, they, there were some constraints in the original layout which have been rectified. Uh, the areas near the driveways, by and large, work fine with the exception of one of the radii here, which they have also since corrected. So I think from a maneuverability standpoint, that there's sufficient area within the property to accommodate those types of movements now. Um, though the board would need to have the official submitted plans to be able to point to something. Um, so I can answer your two questions. My, it has to be that size building. It has to be that capacity. It has to be. Because I'm, you know, I, I do agree with that. It's very, very tight, and I do worry about the winter. I'm having just survived this past winter, which was awful. Um, and I can see people having trouble getting out on the roadway because there are big, big piles of snow and you can't see, so it backs up. Somebody's, I'm a mom, I remember what it was like to have to drop my kids off at daycare. You know, you've got to do it. You know, you're going to be late the seventh time this month, you're going to get killed for this. So you stop and you are in a hurry and get your kid out of the car and you take them and, and I just, I really, I hate to do this, I hate to pull the safety card, but that's actually what I'm looking at there is how safe is that when people do start kind of leaving the reservation, oh my God, I have to drop my kid off and you drop it and somebody else is trying to get out and somebody else is backing out. I mean, how do you, I assume you've never had any accidents or any close calls, but this looks like a recipe for disaster to me. That's why we have so many over. Right. But how do you control people who sure. can't find a space and they're not going to, they are absolutely not going to go out and try to turn left against traffic and circle back around. They're not going to do it. They're going to stop right there and, and take their kid in. Could you have people there who bring the kids in? I mean, I've heard places doing things like that where the parents don't have to leave the cars because that's, it's just going to happen. You know, somebody somehow will back into some child. Excuse me, Chairman. Well, Yes, I just wanted to make a couple of brief, very brief points, and that's not even everything that's on my mind. But I, I wanted to explain one other aspect of the project. Um, these facilities take years to reach capacity. This is not going to be, you turn it open tomorrow and you've got a full compliant. You have to, word up, it's got to get on the street. They will slowly build up to their expected capacity levels. So then at so, that point we have the disaster. Well, well, hold on. We just delay it a little well, bit. Well, I just wanted you to understand that, that it might take two years to reach that. So we have time to be able to take a look at, okay, well, we tried this program, and this is working very effectively. We tried this program, and that's going to do it. And you know what? We even made some adjustments to the staffing levels, and man, we've got this thing humming. We can handle the flow. We've got time to look at it. So Bob's original proposal uh, in his uh, review of our study was, yeah, you know what? He thinks it's tight. 
And I disagree with some of the calculations he did. I cite that ITE says, based on the square footage, we have uh, more parking um, than is that IT would suggest, based on square footage. Based on the total number of students, we've got more parking than IT would suggest. Okay, that's the national standard. The only one that is outside the envelope is the, the, the staffing level calculation, and that's what he's basing some, a lot of these conclusions on, if I read his report correctly. Well, in this case, I think an 11-hour program uh, for a school is longer than typical. We have more staffing needs as a, as a result, but we're not resulting in necessarily higher parking generation. So there's, it's important to understand that if we have an approval based on, all right, a year from now, we're going to do a count and verify that these programs are working, and if they're not, then we could identify other measures like we'll, get, we'll limit the staff parking to 15 on site, or whatever reasonable condition that we could work our way out. Well, I, I appreciate your comment. Let me just say that we, we've actually tried that before, where, you know, we, we weren't sure about the, how, the, how it would work, we, but the, 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 we were comforted by, by the assurance that we, they could come back later and make adjustments and fix it. And the fix is always, I'm thinking of, you know, I'm thinking of Dunkin' Donuts. Right. The fix is always well, the, difficult. The fix could be this, and, and this is one other last quick point, I, I, and I do not mean to be arguing. In, in my mind, based on discussions with Goddard and my own on-site observations and, and detailed discussions with the staff at the school, I'm convinced I can get this to work. I'm convinced. But I can understand the board's reservation. I don't like being compared to a Dunkin' Donuts or some other more intensive use, but that's where some of the that's where some of the issues are. And in terms of the specific language of the condition of the approval, it could be where it's like, okay, well we're only gonna let this many amount of staff park on site if you don't show that you've you've met your parking demand. And that would be a way of not saying we're gonna reduce this prototype where the performance for this site were already submitted to the bank, and all of the business models were developed based on, well, we're going to get this, and if we get the approval, we can fund this much, and we're going to pay off this note. Going back and trying to ask for an approval for a bar stool, but we just want you to take away one leg, is not going to work with the bank. And, and so I think that between Bob and I, we can come up with some language that he would say, that's the teeth I was looking for, that makes sense to me. And the board may still have concerns, and the board may still decide we can't do it. But I was the guy that was out there for 12 hours looking at the site. And I was the guy having 50 phone calls with Frost going, what do you think about this site? What do you think of This tenant gets it. He understands, and no one at that Wayland School does ever even walk out in the parking lot and figure out what may be issues or could be improved. And the Goddard School folks, Looked at the staffing so levels. Yeah. The Goddard folks looked looked at the staffing levels and say, "There's redundancies here. There's flexibility we can build in here." I this was a daycare facility. We developed and spent a ton of money trying to get this thing ready to go to take an abandoned building and make a good use out of it. And in my professional opinion, and I have considerable experience in this field, something like 45 million. <coughs> square feet of development. I am convinced. But if we can't get the language right in that exception, if we can't get uh, the board to agree, well then, you'll have the abandoned site. And you'll wait for the next user to come along. But I think this proposal can work. That's my honest opinion. Mr. Chairman, in response to one of the members questions with regard to producing the staff, it is economically, it cannot work. The population of the other enrollment. It's not economically feasible at 90 or anything less than 132. And yet you just said that you don't you don't expect to ever make 130 students. It well, would probably average out as like 120 or 110 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so how is that economically so what feasible? I mean, that doesn't make sense. Well, it, to me. So throughout the year, you have six weeks, six week olds to six year olds mm -hmm. coming in, and really, you know. 
um, there's part-timers and full-timers, and throughout the year you have kind of, it peaks out at like, Wayland's been open for six years, they're only at Okay, so you have fluctuating levels of enrollment. Yeah, in the summer they drop, right. okay. because kids go out to camp, especially the um, pre-K-2, pre-K-1, pre-K-2, they go out to camp before they get, go to kindergarten. And so you but really his have- But his point was just that you cannot reduce the number from 130, that that's what you need to make it economically feasible. Not for a maximum. It can't, it can't work at a maximum of 90, if, if that's your question. Yeah. Right. Well, what would the maximum be? So if you're always running less than 130, <coughs> what would the maximum be that you actually can survive at? 110? It's it's built for 132. But, but, you never, but you just told me that- uh, The enrollment is different than the number of students that will be attending. Some will be part-time. So you have to have- a, a Okay, I'm just not the math whiz. I guess no, I just you you have to have a- No, this it's is very easy. Simple. It's, so I think it's very easy to understand. Yeah. It's a simple plan. It it's, it's, you know what, there's a lot of different variables that come into play. But am I wrong in thinking, I thought when Mike first presented this, you mentioned that there were two sizes that were available, one was 6,000 or 6,500 square feet. Time. 8 to 10, 10,000 square feet. Yeah. So this is a smaller facility. This is the small, okay. Yeah. Right. I picked well, up on that right away. I mean, yeah. personally, my gut has told me since day one that it's too much program and therefore too much building for the site. And now when I hear that it can only accommodate 90 people from our mm -hmm. traffic consultant, um, mm -hmm. I feel that that's all that it should accommodate, period, end of story. And, and I'm not going to approve anything greater than 90 people. Um, but I, I also wanted to ask you a couple questions. Um, is there any reason that you can't go counterclockwise one way so that if they do have to go into the street, they don't have to cross the traffic lane to go back in? That's certainly an option. Um, you know, I, I don't see any particular reason why you couldn't do it that way. You know, it's, it would need to be properly signed. Right. Uh, that would first, first and foremost. Because this would be a facility that's frequented by the same people, uh, once you've established that pattern, it would, it would stick. Um, so that's certainly something we can consider. And the other thing is, um, does your traffic study take into account, is it, I assume it's not assuming that everyone going towards Boston, that, that the people who have kids in the facility are going to continue towards Boston because they're going to work, because in this town anyway, I would say, just from a guess that at least half of them are going to end up turning back and going into town mm -hmm. because either they're not going to work or they're going in another direction, not towards Boston. Right. So um, I, I just want to make sure that you're not assuming that everyone is turning or that most of the people are turning right. It was, it, it's a very good question. I asked the same question to the applicant and I've done what I refer to as a sensitivity analysis. So the applicant has assumed a 50-50 split Mm -hmm. I've assumed, uh, well, what if it's a 70-30, um, you know, to exactly model what you just suggest. And under that scenario, where the, you know, three out of four people would be inclined to take a left turn out, right. that's what I tested. And okay. that scenario would indicate the delays are a, a bit different than what was presented in the applicant's original study. So um, at the same time, <clears throat> while it's longer delay, the analysis very clearly shows that that queue is probably still only about two or three cars. It's, it's not, this is not, you know, traditional commercial <coughs> use as you would, you know, suggest a Dunkin' Donuts or something. That the volume that this does is vastly different. It's um, not that, it's the, it's, it's, it's the, the prediction of an operation mm -hmm. that doesn't come true. Right. And how do you fix it if it doesn't come true? Yeah. I mean, it, it, I didn't mention it because I thought they were comparable facilities. We had the same kind of discussion, though, which is we think this is going to work. It looks like it's going to work. I understand. We're taking all the precautions. It should work. And if it doesn't work, we can fix it later. And so we said, okay, well, we'll approve it. And then guess what? It didn't work. <laughs> and people, it, was, it turned into the Wild West. <laughs> uh, was that the Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I understand that you weren't trying to conflict I mean, the so we, we, the, the how pure do you issue, fix it after the, the, the pure issue, The pure issue was that, how do you make that mechanism work? And what I was suggesting is, you know, we don't think we need additional parking, but the condition could be, do a study, not have the town monitor it, we'll do it, submit it to your consultant, 
he reviews it and it's like, you know what, that does look like that is working, or you know what, you're still a little shy. And then with teeth, say, okay, well then you'll only be able to have X amount of staff spaces available on site, so you're gonna have to get some of them off the site. And that condition, if that's what's gonna make this board satisfied, and I don't have the time to explain all the conversations I had, and I get it, and you've had previous experience in town that were didn't go that right way, and I get that too. But if we can put some teeth in it and make it so that, okay, you've got the mechanism. You didn't do, the, the board wasn't able to make that language happen the last time, and they learned from it. Well, let's learn from it, because I'm convinced we can get the site to work. But if we needed to get some additional off-site parking, well then, that is a more livable situation if we show that we need it, and Bob can confirm those results a year from now, or two years from now, or set, hey, once you hit 90 students, we need a test. And if it's okay, well, we still need more tests when you hit 100, and 110. And if that's what we have to do, then we'll do it. In the meantime, your consultant is making a lot of promises. Is that, are they are It can be conditioned in a certificate of action. Uh, compared to, there's an annual certificate of occupancy. Issue. Compared to the issue of, taking away one leg of the stool, and, and I, I'm a business owner, and I know what it's like to deal with a bank, and you get all your ducks in a row, and all of a sudden you say, well, I wanted to buy a Cadillac, and that's gonna be the collateral for this loan, but here's a Pinto. Still wanna do the deal? I, I, it's, I, I, I don't mean to be. Just, well, I, have but a, I have a question. I mean, you're talking about let's have some teeth written in, and, and you're talking about moving the teachers off-site, because that would be obviously the only thing you'd be able to do Right. To gain those extra parking spaces, mm -hmm. uh, what would you do? What would you do to you make that happen? Yeah, it's already carpooling. All right. Releasing releasing staff earlier or later. Uh, there, there are a number of ways, and I think Mr. Michel, you recited. But one those. of these, the trouble with all of that is it requires policing, and who will be the police? So my brother, and, my brother mm -hmm. and I would be on-site owners, and we'll be on-site every day. We manage every aspect of the business and let the assistant. And what would the team be that we would have? I'm sorry. What what recourse would we have if we found that things were not working, and that yes, we were promised that there would be people, you know, just bust in, and then we, let's just say that mm, David has nothing to do, so he's going down there on 117 anyway, and he's looking at me saying, oh, these are all staff cars there. I notice they're not moving. So then, what do we do? Close you down? Will you permit? What do we do? You could. Well, we've come up with a slew of parking management suggestions, not just one. So in, if we take all of these suggestions and put them together, I, I really think that you won't have to ask any questions. You know, we, we've found two, two spots here to park in and a spot here. And above and beyond that, between Mr. Michaud and Mr. Woodland, there's been, and maybe they haven't been clearly presented because there's been discussions all over the place, but there's a handful of strong parking management solutions, you know, from from carpooling for kids. So a parent that has a five-year-old and their neighbor has a five-year-old, they can carpool them in and out of the school to carpooling for, for teachers. There, luckily, that spot has um, public transportation close by that a teacher can figure out how to get to the school. Unlike that, they, they, can, they can monitor who comes in and who comes out of there at what times. You know, okay, well, I hate to say this, but it's 10.30, and my brain has, like, died. We still have a lot of other applicants we behind you. I just want to share a couple of quick things. So. One is, Steve, I like the idea about a clockwise counterterrorism. Oh, no, you're right, clockwise. I'm sorry. I'm not that sleepy yet. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's a good idea, of, you know, knowing how that traffic is on 117. Um, uh, to me, this calls for a, a situation where the parents drop off and pick up without getting out of their cars, and they are met by staff and their kids. But you don't have space for it uh, in this configuration. So I don't know exactly how you make that work. But giving, which would give you more area for queuing of vehicles. My fear is that you'll get, you'll get filled up because some people can't get out and other people will be stuck on 117, not moving, waiting to get in. That will be a disaster, I think. And, and your, your numbers don't show that, I guess, or you would have said it, but you know, there. So then my last thought is 
maybe, you know, uh, certainly in the early times, you know, the, in, I mean, when you're starting up, thinking about a detail to keep the traffic, you know, correct in that respect. So you don't have people backed up onto the highway, onto the road, because that would also be dangerous. Those are my thoughts. Bob, does your traffic study um, assume that the cars in the morning are basically stopped in front of the facility and in the afternoon are stopped on the other side of the street and that therefore the only way people can go in and out is that a car will let them go in and out? The kindness of strangers. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah, so the, the model, we, we're obligated to look at the model results, right? And um, so today there are a thousand cars an hour that are headed toward uh, 128. And the reverse happens in the evening. Mm -hmm. So it's very directional, very, mm -hmm. very directional. Um, in the morning, if you wanted to make a left turn into here, you're being opposed by a thousand cars an hour. Mm -hmm. right now, there are sufficient gaps based on the limited number of people that want to make that turn so that we don't anticipate the left turn movement in, even though you're, you're, you're opposed by a lot of cars. There, there will be sufficient occasional gaps that are created to allow that to happen. Right. I'm thinking more of the people that want to go out right. and that these people have to stop for them. Correct. So um, so that same scenario in the morning is much more difficult. And that's what our analysis shows, the sensitivity analysis shows, you know, this isn't going to take 30 seconds. This right. is going to take probably upwards of a minute or more to do that. Now, uh, if that's the case and you have a <coughs> typical arrival rate or departure rate of one to two vehicles a minute, right? That's where you're getting that two car queue. So yeah, it's gonna take a while, but the demand number is not so high that it's gonna create an on-site queuing issue. That's mm -hmm. that's the answer, okay. as opposed I, to it. Yeah. I also think, I mean, as Sally mentioned, you have that angled parking spot. Karas, F-I-R-A-S, Akrawi, A-K-R-A-W-I. You look at that angled spot, which would be the extra spot, and adding those two spots in that square where my sister's pointing out, now we're at the 35 spots. So we've gone from 32 to 35. So if that's fine, and that's right there, I mean, it's not, you know, as, as I think Rob and Bob were sh saying, it was between, you know, the 30 to 35. We're right now at that 35. If we're able to add those two spots on that location. You'll never get two spots in there. We were able to actually, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. we were able to sketch it out so that we could fit a spot here and a spot here on either side of the line. Which Mr. Woodland had seen as well. I fortunately, we the printer didn't print out. <coughs> yeah. I don't know what, to, I don't know where to go. I, I mean, we, 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 we really. Yeah, we do, we do have one, one comment from... Uh, I was trying to say, I, my understanding of this was about public hearing. I mean, at 10.30 at night, I don't know how much time you have for the public. <laughs> um, uh, do you have a comment? Yes. All right. Where are they going to put the snow when they move it? That's comment number one, the question number one. Name and address, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, Ms. Saunders and Alice Road. Okay. Erica. Yes, the question is, they say they're going to haul the snow off. I mean, it's one of those things where you say you're going to assign parking spaces to the teachers. You're going to haul the snow off. You know, you're going to, do, you're, you're going to, you're going to only let people come in one way. You're going to have signage directing the traffic. You're not, you know, if, if it stacks up, people aren't going to be able to double park. But there, you know, the, th the question is, when you have a, a, an apparatus like that, a, a, a mechanism, if something doesn't, if something goes wrong, the snowplow guy doesn't come, or there's no, what is the cure? You know, that's the, it's this. This is the question we're asking. What happens if if they don't haul the snow off? Uh, what happens if somebody decides? If the teachers decide to park in other places. What happens if some if they have a bright idea and they do have an afternoon program, that you know the crackers and banana program? What what you know? There's so many things that have to happen just exactly the right way, and that's the, that's what's scary for me. It's I, I totally understand the question. This board has the ability 
under the subdivision control law to revoke a plan. This board also has the ability to revoke a certificate of action if there's any conditions that have been violated by the applicant. The board has that authority to do that. But to speculate that if this applicant is going to um, get scoffball every condition that this board has imposed, I think is unfair. I think that's unreasonable. You've, you've, you've communicated that. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to get a consensus of this board. Obviously, we're going to continue to hear it. Five people that are pretty skeptical. That's 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 the way I would put well, it. Well, I'd like to know what what range of skepticism do we have? I mean, is it is the board looking for more parking spaces? Um, I think there's been some notion tonight that this applicant has the ability that would be subject to landscaping review, would be subject to some of our management calculations being resubmitted. But the, this board does have the, this applicant does have the ability to redesign the parking to add three additional parking spaces, which which is in excess of what their consultant says is, it was, is required or needed on this plan. And if that's the consensus that the board is making here tonight, we'll go back and forth. And, and perhaps Mr. Woodland and Mr. Michaud can discuss those and see if they can come back the next time and present that. You've heard a number of suggestions, and some of them may make sense to you and stuff. We need to have a, a, an updated plan anyway. We need to have you know, uh, a, a plan about how you're going to deal with the snow how you're going to deal with parking and we, you need you know so you will be coming back with that information so uh, I think we've communicated a lot about what our concerns are we've thrown some ideas you know out on the table to consider that may help be helpful um, and um, you know if you're you're obviously wedded to this location and you're wedded to your program capacity you know um, which, of course, drives the concern, all right? It's pushing the envelope in this location, in this, on this, you know, square footage of property, okay? And the tolerance is a real thing. Doesn't work. Right. So, do you want to let the public continue to, you weren't finished, were you? If you're continuing the hearing, we can wait and talk some more later. Mm -hmm. We need to continue. Well, Erica, did you have other concerns? Oh, yeah. Oh, you do? Well, of course. Well, let's hear them. Well, my experience with public schools are that they have special programs. When a lot of people come, they don't just drive in and drop off their kids. And that even happens for some of the daycare centers here in town. They have special programs. And then all the parents come. So. What are the plans for that? Special program? I think she means like a special event, you know. Uh, and these are yeah. happening off site. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what they have happen. it off site? Off site. We're, we're not having, you know. If, if you don't you have, have ballet recitals? If you have, no. If you have, no. We don't have the theater. We don't have those special programs if there's a graduation. Uh, this is off site. And um, I, I wasn't aware of this back when you talked about um, some of the actual building things, but I presume given this planning board that you will make sure the lighting is not offensive to neighbors. Yeah, and yeah we went through that earlier. We went through that. Right. Okay. And I know that you usually are really good on that, so that's good. Okay. okay. Any other comments? Well, the landscaping is kind of... It's pretty sparse. And, uh, more sparse if they have parking sparse. 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 And uh, what well, do they have to have a stormwater management plan? Because that's really that affects us. They don't have to do stormwater management. Yes, yes so we, we, we yeah, went through that. To, you've been through that. We did, okay. the, the, We were down to the traffic. <laughs> okay. We went through some of the, a lot of the other stuff earlier. What we is it? I'd say we're, we're down to the last part. Yeah. Well, it's a big part, though. Yeah. Big part. You, you know, my brother and I, and everyone here with us, we have about two, four, six people here representing. You know, we, we've been living, breathing, eating this to pieces. So, you know, whatever comments you have that we can come back with and hopefully, you know, shake hands on, I'd appreciate now. You know, I, we'll, come up, we'll come up with, you know, a, a, a solution that will make everyone happy, 
you know, and and we'd like to see this work. We think it's going to benefit the town. This you know better I mean? work. <laughs> I don't know. I'm serious. You know I don't want another situation where it where where we're promised that it's going to work. It's going to be fine. You don't have to worry about a thing. We'll fix it. And then later on, when it doesn't work, hey, we, there's nothing we can do. We've done everything we can. I don't want that in, again. I mean, that's it's that not does not, not that that is not helpful. It's not in our interest to have angry parents or an angry community. We have a bad situation. We have parents get angry at us. They're going to pass the word and tell everybody else we're going to lose business. It's all about pleasing the customer, especially parents. You know how parents are finicky with their kids. Especially, and it's getting worse and worse. So it's in our interest well, to make this work. You heard us. To make Figure it out happy. how you can make this work, and it better be ironclad. And I don't. I, and it, I, that means it, it's going to work. You said it. I know I can make this work. Come back to us. We're going to continue it to what date? The, the June fourth. June fourth. And let's have a plan in place that that we can that that, that overcomes the skepticism. Do you think that's enough time? For you to hammer this out to you've know, you heard of you know, a bunch of skeptics up here. Okay. Reduce the very grand. And you know the beauty is it's a it's a franchise, but it's also a mom and pops in the sense that we're owners on site every day. We're sympathetic. With so just what we're saying is it's a smaller yeah. it's a small tight building envelope. It's a yeah. small tight envelope for a lot of programs. And so right. but um, my point is month. we will work with the community. It um, looks like you know, the, it's not just a business. It looks like the proverbial five pounds of sugar to us in a three pound tank. And that's what it looks like. So. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sally. Thank you. Sorry, Sally. Oh, <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. You got to do it your office. Yes. 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 Thank you.